which you have to treat differently. So critical point is different from anybody else because it's a zero derivative and everybody else is either monotonely up or monotonely flip. And uh, we are allowed to do the following thing. We are allowed to make this an interval. You know, we are allowed to have a map that says everybody in this interval gets the same value and then I go on. So now why this is a cool thing it's cool for the following reason. The tent map is a nice example of symbolic dynamics which is unrestricted, has no rules. For tent map everything is possible, meaning that if I start at some point here, it will take some value which will be twice this interval, then to find the next iteration I will flip and use this point here as a starting point. So this is xn, this is xn plus 1 and evaluate that. Then I'll flip this, evaluate that and I will make a visitation sequence of the left and right interval. So depending on what my initial x end point was, I can uh, visit intervals. And what's wonderful about the tent map that I can specify every trajectory, the itinerary of every trajectory, which is the sequence forward in time. of symbols, or symbols, we find it convenient, we could call it left and right, but it turns out there's a very simple computational reason why you give them numerical values, because you can actually do computations. And the tenth map has a property that all sequences are admissible, you know, nothing is forbidden, no grammar rules. So the sequences are not binary numbers, and I'm sorry, I think it's more convenient to write the sequence this way. This is where I am now, and next instant I'll be either left or right, two time steps, three time steps, etc. So if I write this in terms of zero one, it looks like a binary number. It turns out, you know, it's not a binary number, it's very closely related to binary number. So this we will use to define all possible sequences. And why are all sequences admissible? Because if you take any one interval, for example left one, in one iteration it stretches over both intervals. So if I'm here I can land either left and right. Same thing here, if I start on the right I can land left and right. Now I repeat. So no matter what little neighborhood I am, you know, I'll eventually end up every place. So this is a beautiful example of ergodic sequences that every normal number goes through all possible numbers and there is no law that tells you, you must not do this. You can go left and right, 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 left, right, whatever you want to do. So that's unrestricted grammar. But when you look at Rosler system or any system that we really look at, this is extremely non-generic behavior because this behavior requires that this return maps the place where the turning happens exactly lands at a fixed point and you know, it's only this trajectory that will do it, this guy. Now if you never get as far as going the whole length of the interval in the map so we have a gap here. Then what happens is that when I look where this iterates, it ends up here and then it does whatever it does. So it turns out that if the stretching is not sufficient, then I will, uh, I will never come back close to the fixed point again. And this is actually what we observe in Rossler system. There is a fixed point here 
But Flo never revisits it. I can start close to him, but I'll never come back. So this is an unstable isolated point. So it throws out all its neighbors. Yeah. It's uh, kind of me-generation, doesn't like anybody. And they don't come back. You know, They go, but they stay away. And that's very typical behavior. So generic behavior when you have an equilibrium, which is unstable, is that it's easy to find, but you don't find it in dynamics because dynamics doesn't revisit it. So this is a very special case. The generic case, well, there, you know, there are two generic cases. You, you could have a map which is bigger than unit interval. So what that map does is if you end up someplace here, you actually get out of the unit interval and you're gone to come back. So that's what happened with billiards. You know, if I didn't hit one of the two billiards, I went through the hole and that's it, gone. So that happens in that case with talk about not attractors but repellers. Dynamics is such that almost everybody runs away except the fractal set of things that hang around. But if the map doesn't reach the unit interval, we do have a strange attractor but it's a non-trivial grammar. Now, for unimodal maps, this is a sole problem, so that's why I'm doing it. It's the only case where we know how to specify the grammar and specify all admissible sequences. And the way we do this is we go from here to there. So what does that mean? We find a point. On this map, this critical point goes around and does something. 